there were really and truly lots of good days. And sometimes we would define good days differently. I think my kids might define a good day one way. And for me, it might be just those moments that I connected to their hearts, where I'm thinking to myself, had they been in a traditional classroom, I would have missed that. Hey everyone, this is Yvette Hampton. Welcome back to the Schoolhouse Rocked podcast. I am back with one of my favorite people. It has been a little while since she's been on. For those who may not be familiar with Linda, she is the author of The Mystery of History, and it is a fantastic history curriculum. Our family has loved this curriculum, and um, it is it is a curriculum that is that teaches world history through a biblical worldview, and we absolutely love it, and we love her. We've had the privilege of being in her home a few times and getting to know her and her husband, Ron, and they are just an absolute treasure to us. And so we are so excited to have her back on the podcast. But before we get back into our conversation with her, I want to say thank you to our sponsor, BJU Press Homeschool. If you're looking for a, another biblical worldview curriculum for any subject, if you're looking for language arts or math or spelling or science, uh, BJU Press Homeschool has something for you. And so they've got K3 through 12th grade core curriculum that will fit all of your needs. Um, They teach critical thinking, multi-sensory learning. It can be parent-led. It can be video-led. They've got it all. So check them out, bjupresshomeschool.com. Also, we want to say thank you to those of you who continue to support this ministry financially. I cannot tell you what an incredible blessing that is for our family and for this ministry, because we cannot do what it is that we do without your financial support and without the support of our sponsors. And we are so grateful for you and for them as well. And so uh, you can give financially at our website, schoolhouserocked.com. Click on that donate button. We would love it if you would consider doing that. Uh, But another way that you can help support the ministry is by sharing this episode. It's a really simple and easy thing to do, but that really does help us. So whether you're listening to it as a podcast, share that with your friends, or if you're watching it on YouTube, if you could subscribe and like, and then share that with your friends as well, that would be a huge blessing to us. Um, Linda, welcome back to the Schoolhouse Rock podcast. It has been quite some time since you have been on with me, and I am so excited about our conversation this week. We have a lot of important and and hard things to discuss this week, Um, but before we get into that, would you introduce yourself to our audience for those who may not know who you are? Sure. And it is so good to see you, Yvette. So I am the author of The Mystery of History, as you alluded, but I also am a former homeschool mom. My children are now all adults and I have five grandchildren with one more on the way. So I'm in the next season, which is a very interesting viewpoint. You know, I will never forget the days in the trenches because those were hard days. We're going to talk about that today. But I'm also on the other side where I can see the fruit. My grandchildren are being homeschooled. In fact, they're in the Mystery of History Volume 1 right right now this Ah. year. And so it is sweet to be um, past the long days and um, just into the next season. Yeah. As a grandmother. Yeah. Oh, so fun. We were talking before we hit the record button. You've got grandbabies who now live right directly across the street from you and how exciting that is. That's like my dream is for my girls to live next door to me or across the street would be fine. I mean, you know, we'd have to walk all the way across Mm -hmm. the street, Um, but that would be my absolute (laughs) dream is to have them living right next to me so that I can see them and my grandbabies whenever I want. But, you know, who knows what the Lord has for them? We're we're praying through that fervently, of course. But what I want to talk about this week is something that I think every homeschool family faces. Not I think, I know every homeschool family faces these things. And we're going to talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly of homeschooling and of life because life throws us these things. Sometimes we have things that are going really, really well, like everything is just in place and, you know, life is going great. And then we might hit some really difficult times. And that is just the life that we have. That's the world in which we live. And so we need to know how to be prepared for those thing, these things um, that come upon us. And, and with homeschooling, oftentimes moms want to give up because when things are going well, They're like, okay, I got this. Things are going great. I can keep going. And then when things get really hard, sometimes I think we just want to say, you know what? This is just too hard. I can't do this homeschooling thing anymore. I'm ready to give up. So we're going to talk through these things. um, But first, let's park on the good first. And and I know (laughs) that with, you know, you you have 17 years of homeschooling under you. You Mm -hmm. homeschooled three kids. Talk about what some of the good things are um, as you look back and have a different perspective now from a grandmother's point of view. What are some of the things that you did right that 
kind of helped with the good part of homeschooling? Sure. Well, first, let me say there's no perfect homeschool. And I know that's stating the obvious, but let's just say it anyway. Uh, But I will say there were really and truly lots of good days. And sometimes we would define good days differently. I think my kids might define a good day one way. And for me, it might be just those moments that I connected to their hearts where I'm thinking to myself, had they been in a traditional classroom, I would have missed that. Mm. or this, or what have you. So, you know, we all might define success differently. But I will say that there's uh, a few things I think I did right that perhaps contributed. So let me rattle through that list quickly. I have eight little nuggets, and then we'll get to the bad and the ugly. So (laughs) don't forget that that's coming. But number one, this sounds kind of silly, but number one is homeschool at home. Mm. (laughs) You wouldn't think I'd have to say that, but there are so much opportunities, especially for today's homeschool parent, that you could find yourself at co-ops and in clubs and at events um, in the car, like a lot. And it's not that those are bad things, but I think we do need to choose those outside activities wisely because some of the beauty truly is being at home. It might be that you are homeschooling in your pajamas, but there's a level of intimacy that only the home provides. So I don't want people to forget about that and just you know look for everything else but being home. That meant that Monday through Thursday, we probably carved out four to six hours to be home. Friday, maybe co-op and activities and stuff like that, but we did try to carve out during the week. Number two, I highly recommend that you choose a school name, perhaps a motto. And now keep in mind that we started homeschooling way back in the late 1980s and we were pioneers. And so I found that with so Uh, many people back then who didn't have a clue what homeschooling was, that it was important that we named our homeschool because it was a a real entity. You know, Mm -hmm. it just helped people treat it more seriously. So we called ours uh, Wimberly Hills Homeschool. It was sort of a tie-in of our, um, where my husband and I honeymooned. And then our motto for school was Proverbs 1-7. That's the one that says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. So feel free to borrow that. It's, I yeah. didn't coin it. That's a proverb. <laughs> uh, you didn't coin the proverbs. <laughs> didn't coin that proverb. Uh, number three, and here's one that it took me a while to arrive at. But if you lean toward lesson plans or you don't lean toward lesson plans or you're even conjuring the idea that one day you might have lesson plans, whenever you do them, keep them undated. Keep them Mm. date free if possible. And I say that because let me just tell you, Yvette, I started as a loosey goosey homeschool mom that did no lesson plans. And honestly, honestly, that worked great for years when they were little. I wrote down what we did after we did it. (laughs) Well, that's not lesson planning. That was record keeping. I was good at it. (laughs) And then as my children grew, when my oldest was in middle school and I realized she truly needed more structure, I started making real lesson plans where I wrote down what I wanted to do before we did it. But the reality is that my first set were too strict. They were too binding because, well, what if somebody had 103 fever that day? Or what if a spontaneous field trip came up? Or what if I forgot a holiday or whatever? You know, there's lots of things that come up that throw us off of those strict dates. Mm -hmm. So one day, now this was back in the day when they sold Whiteout. I didn't even know if they sell that (laughs) anymore, but the the product called Whiteout. There was a day I took Whiteout across the top of my lesson planner and took all the dates out. What I realized is that I literally had a plan. I had an outline, but it wasn't date driven. Mm -hmm. It was simply more or less, it became kind of like a weekly goal. Like it would be nice if we could do this much in history and this much science and this much math, because, you know, I do have some goals. I want to finish these subjects by the end of the year, but it doesn't have to be this Wednesday. Maybe we take a break for four days and come back or pick up where we left off. All to say it really helps my family breathe when I removed the dates. Can we park there for just a second? Because for yeah, those moms absolutely. who are like, what is what exactly should that look like? Because you know, you've got, in most states, you are supposed to do 180 days of school, got mm-hmm. 365 days out of the year. So would you, would you date them like day one, day two, day three, without putting the actual day, you know, September 1st, yes. September 2nd, is that how you would do it? And then you would try to get done in that day, what you wanted for that specific day where, whenever that day fell in the calendar? 
Yes, that's a better way to look at it. I sort okay. of had like a daily outline. And yes, in retrospect, it might say day one. But let's be realistic. Day one, what I had on that list might have been half done on Monday and half sure. done on Tuesday. Yeah. But I have time because I have 365 days in a year. So right. those two got merged, but it's technically day one, you know, to help me get through a course or what have you. And I do believe that at the time I was under this, we were actually counting weeks. And so not so much days as I would count a week because we needed 36 weeks of school. We have homeschooled in different states. So it varied state to state how to keep records. But I did acknowledge the amount of time that my authorities expected me to put in. Sure. But it wasn't necessarily Monday through Friday that it looked exactly like this. And for your real um, artistic child who doesn't like going down a column anyway. And if you think about it, if they open up a folder and there's a, you know, like there are columns that represent work, but if they're not dated, then the truth is some children could zigzag all over that open week. And maybe they want to do all their math on Monday. Sure. Well, that wouldn't have happened in my family. <laughs> maybe they want to do all of one thing on Monday and then all of another thing on Tuesday because they get into a stride and course, we're talking about more independent children, but they can work that yeah. and, and go with their mood, go with their flow. And it's what's interesting about time management at that age is that some kids will realize, well, wow, if I do all the stuff I don't like first, I'll have the end of the week to do what I do enjoy. Right. Whereas some kids will take the complete opposite approach. They'll do all their fun stuff first and then realize they get all the uh, right. uh, <laughs> grunt work at the end of the week. But different personalities respond differently. So yeah. we really liked the undated approach. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree. I think it takes so much stress off. And, and, you know, as we're talking about the good days, I agree that that it can make for a really bad day when you have a very specific plan, especially for those mm -hmm. type A's, which I am not, but for those who are super type A, if they have a plan and they can't stick to that plan because life happens, then they feel like that good day has become a really bad day and right. it can cause a lot of frustration for them and for their kids. So, so I love that. Um, let's take a break. We'll be right back. We want to thank all of our sponsors for making this show possible. BJU Press Homeschool, CTC Math, Apologia, and Summit Ministries. Without them, we wouldn't be able to do this. Visit the show notes for links to these great companies and thank them for supporting the Schoolhouse Rocked podcast. We are back with Linda. Okay, so we're talking about the eight things you did right. You talked about homeschool at home, um, have a school name and a motto, and then undated lesson plans. What's your next one? All right, next please try to avoid answering the phone or texting during school hours mm. only because we want our children, I think, to respect and value that the, the time that we're all putting into this. And the, the truth is I had to train some of the loved ones in my life back in the day to just not call me in the morning hours I had carved out. Yeah. Now, Sometimes school's happening all day long. I'm not saying it has to be morning, but the days that it was, I needed to be careful and just set a genuine boundary because though I'm not paid to homeschool, it was like a part-time job. Sure. So just guard that time to treat it with value. Yeah. Then here's another one. This is just sort of a silly thing, but uh, I have to throw it out there. One of the things I think we did right was every now and then we play role reversal where, where I would let one of the older children take a little unit or a subject and then they had to teach the rest of us. And of course, in doing so, uh, that student certainly learned a lot about the topic because they had to prepare for it, maybe create a little activity. And then the rest of us would probably really act up. You know, we would pester each other and just be, our behavior was poor, was horrible, but it certainly taught a lesson to the one teaching about how valuable it is if people would, you know, pay attention to the one teaching. So we did role reversal quite a bit with different kids as they grew. Just a little fun thing. Super fun. Now on the, another, another light one is, and this is maybe just maybe a relationship thing, but every one of my children had a very special love song assigned to them. And I didn't come up with this on purpose. It just sort of happened by default. But uh, I'll tell you what they were. My oldest uh, one is um, The First Time Ever I Saw Your Face. Do you know that song by Roberta I do not. Flack? No. Oh, it's just beautiful. It's really a love song, but I just remember it. Uh, it was the epitome of what I felt oh. the first time ever I saw her face. You know, first time mom, this baby handed to you and you're never the same. So that was my chosen love song for her. For my son, Kyle, it's the song I'll Always Love You by Taylor Dane. 
beautiful song. And I danced with him at his wedding to that oh, song. Oh. And then for Ashley, my okay. youngest, the song was, um, oh goodness, it was the one, I'm drawing it blank on it. I know it, I know it, I know it. It's um, oh, Shania Twain from this moment. Oh, I love and that song. She, yeah, she was an answer to prayer because uh, we weren't sure about the size of our family, but I was praying for for number three. And so from this moment on is a, a real sweet song. I love that. Would you so sing anyway, these songs to your kids or would you just play them for them? Oh, absolutely. And I'm not a good singer, but they just all <laughs> knew that those were their special songs. One time I did make a mistake publicly and I tried to do from this moment on in a karaoke style situation. Oh, no. It was a disaster. It was so bad. So I had a friend with me who got up and helped me finish the song because I was falling apart. So. Oh, that's so funny. I would never I in a million years her. ever attempt to karaoke in front of, I won't even, I don't sing in front of my family ever. <laughs> I have a horrible just, voice. Let's just say I'll never do it again. Yeah. That's I have so a funny. narrator voice, not a singing voice. Yeah. So, anyway. Oh, that's so funny. And then number seven, so I'm going to try to knock these out so we can get to all the bad and ugly, but um, this is silly, but our family would squabble over this one chair, you know, the one favorite, like the lure, like recliner, the front seat the of the living car. room yeah. or whatever. <laughs> and so we created, I got tired of the squabbling over this chair. And so I wrote a contract one day that assigned who got the chair on what day. And we all had to sign it and agree. And if you, <laughs> if you complained about it, you lost your day. Oh, so wow. That was just one way to solve a little problem. But you know, we all had the favorite chair, including mom. Yeah. So I wanted the chair too. Oh, that's so um, funny. <laughs> yes. And then last number eight, I just want to remind um, your listeners, and I, I know they hear this a lot, but incorporating read alouds, I think is one of the things we did well and did right. Mm. Because read alouds are so much more than just literature. It's more than just sitting together. It's just this blend. It's stepping into another world, be it fiction or nonfiction. And then there's memories built into that. You know, the same is true of maybe watching your favorite movie together. But the read alouds tend to extend it. And I remember vividly when we read aloud the Indian in the cupboard and how my husband made funny voices out of it. And so it's something we remember to this day. Yeah, that's so, so funny. We are actually reading that right now. I have never read that with my girls before. And we're, kidding. that is our current read aloud is the Indian in the cupboard. And I it's like such a it. sweet book. Even, even my 18 year old is enjoying it and um, probably not as much as she has enjoyed some other books, but um, yeah. But it's still enjoyable. And yeah, that's a sweet, I love read aloud time. I mean, we, we talk about this lots on the podcast, but uh, just mm -hmm. having that connection with one another and spending that time with just snuggling up on the couch together. We do mm -hmm. not have a favorite seat in our room where we no. read. Um, <laughs> we don't fight. Our, my girls fight over the front seat of the car, but well, we've well, resolved you need a that contract. as well. Just, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Settle it. Yeah. We, we finally resolved that and they each have their own week. Um, in the front seat. So that, that has <laughs> fixed that problem, which I don't know why it took me so many years to Similar figure that out, principle. but um, yeah, but yeah, read alouds are so much fun and because it brings you into a different world together. And it's like traveling kind of, I mean, you get to yeah. experience life with other people who are in the book, the other characters mm -hmm. in the book and what it is that they're doing. It's like reading history, you know, even as oh, we've read right. the mystery of history, like you're in that world with those other people mm -hmm. experiencing it together. And it's just such a beautiful thing. So uh, mm -hmm. I love it. Yeah. Read, read alouds are really important in homeschooling. I think it's the one thing it's spending time in God's word, um, which I think we should always start with. I mean, you want to have a good day, Sure. start with God's word. And if the day goes crazy from there, at least you've done that. And that is the most important thing, but start with God's word and then do a read aloud together. And, and I, Mm -hmm. I typically feel like for my family that will almost always start the day off on a good note because whatever else we get done is kind of icing on the tone. cake. So yeah, yeah it, it we really threw does. in a little song too. Again, I'm not much of a singer, but we would sing when they were little. This is the day the Lord has made. That's oh. how we started school too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Just a little it's, marchy, clappy. Yeah. I know. It's so fun. Uh, so, so many ways to make sweet memories with your kids, but have that consistency with them to where, you know, they know like, okay, it's school time. We're going to yeah. start out doing these particular things. And, right. We uh, value learning again. Not that it's always formal. I don't mean to sound that we were like a real formal sure. homeschooling family because we weren't. A lot was natural. Oh, yeah. But there were some subjects you need to set up in a little bit more formal a way right. because they're not things we're necessarily drawn to, but they're things that we think are valuable and we want to invest some time in them. 
Yeah, absolutely. Well, we're out of time already. Um, So we've talked about the good, and I know that you guys can find lots of good in your homeschooling as well. Look at what is fun. What what does your family do? What what makes your kids smile? Um, you know, what is the the thing that lights them up when you're homeschooling with them? Start out the day doing those things, and uh, for sure, always start it out with God's word and prayer. That's the best thing. Um, but we are going to get into some of the bad and the ugly because that's life, and that's what we deal with um, oftentimes. In addition to the good things, so um, Linda. Tell us really quickly where people can find out more about you and the mystery of history. Sure. Our website is themysteryofhistory.com. Don't miss the the the. It's part of the title, themysteryofhistory.com. And we have something for everyone. We have four volumes of world history with oodles of resources to um, add to it. So we have the basic student readers, and we have add-ons galore. So you can get your atlases and timeline figures and little learning tools uh, to help. And for those that are struggling, the bare bones is to go with one of our audio books. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's a good way to just add in um, some formal learning in a more relaxed way. Yeah. So when life's tough, those audio books are the best shortcut ever. They are. I love your audiobooks because you read them. And, and maybe it's more a personal thing for me too, because my girls know you, they've known you for many years. And so they like hearing your voice, but you do such a great job of reading them and narrating um, through those books. So, so yes, we highly recommend them. Great history curriculum, strong biblical worldview. We cannot more highly recommend them. The Mystery of History, we'll put links to those in the show notes. Um, Stay tuned to the very end to hear a clip of what's coming up next on the Schoolhouse Rocked podcast. And remember that you can find all things Schoolhouse Rocked at our website, schoolhouserocked.com. Dot com, where you can also stream the movie for free, schoolhouserocked.com. Have a great rest of your day, and we'll see you back here on Wednesday. Bye. Education is discipleship, and this is something I didn't understand until I was probably three years into homeschooling. The Bible teaches us in Luke 640 that when a student is fully trained, he will be like his teacher. And as we look around the culture right now, uh, I think it begs the question, who is teaching our children? Who is teaching our children and what are they teaching our children? And to me, the benefit, the primary benefit of having my children home with me is I am able to impart my worldview to my children. Sometimes a bad day might be one of your better days or a better day than you think because perhaps you were choosing some good parenting that day and the kids just don't like it because they don't like the boundaries. They don't like the wise guidance you're giving them. So there's wailing and gnashing of teeth because you said, no, honey, you can't have ice cream at five o'clock. It's nearly dinner time. Or no, young lady, you can't wear that outfit outside of this house. And so is there resistance from your children? Yes. All to say, don't define your good and bad days on how much lashing out there is, because sometimes that lashing out actually means you're being an awesome parent.